Now we have the big moment we've all been waiting for. Um, we're going to announce who's the winner of the Nestle 2018 CSV Prize. So I would like to invite Mr. Mark Schneider, Chief Executive Officer of Nestle Group. Mr. Schneider, I will hand over to you to explain what is the CSV Prize and why it is important to Nestle. Please come on. Thank you. Thank you very much, and it's certainly a great pleasure and honor to be helping here in awarding the uh, Creating a Shared Value Prize. Um, reflecting on the term Creating Shared Value, I think our Chairman Paul Book in his keynote address made it very clear, this is how we feel about ourselves, this is how we feel about our approach to business, and this applied long before the term was coined. And um, in this term, every word has a meaning creating shared value. Let me point your attention to the first one, creation, okay? Unlike some other people, we don't believe in dropping that word. Just shared value is dividing the pie. What we believe in is value creation. It's about innovative solutions coming together, you enlarge the pie together, and then you share what you commonly created. And in that spirit, eight years ago, we set up the Creating Shared Value Prize toward innovative solutions that really in those areas that are important to us, like rural development, water and nutrition, create additional value to address uh, some of society's needs today. So we've had four prize winners in the past. This is the fifth time now we're awarding the prize. Uh, let's take a quick look at who the uh, prize winners in the past have been. So in 2010, it was IDE in Cambodia uh, this is basically technical assistance, making a business out of technical assistance uh, when it comes to smallhold farming. In 2012, it was Fundacion Paraguaya. Uh, this was about making a business out of agricultural teaching and instruction. 2014, Honey Care Africa. Um, this was about bottom of the pyramid honey farming for bottom of the pyramid customers. And then 2016, Agro Hub in Cameroon connecting smallhold farmers with the markets in a better and more innovative way. Now, when it comes to this year's approach, uh, we were partnering with Ashoka because we felt this was a good way not only to create a nice flow, this was also a good way to create lasting relationships because the award is only the tip of the iceberg, but I think as a result of this award, we also get in touch with a whole lot of innovative approaches that we would like to follow up on. So we received a record number of submissions, uh, in total more than 1,000 submissions. We evaluated those carefully uh, with 66 internal um, um, employees and uh, 11 outside partners, and then we ran the finalists by our Creating Shared Value Council. We invited the six finalists here to give us their final pitches and let's take a look in short videos uh, who these final um, uh, contenders are.
So now we're going to know these amazing people behind these great projects. Um, I would like to invite the six finalists to join us and tell us who they are and what they do. I'm going to start with Sydney Gray from Maji Mamas, Kenya. Well, that was quite the build-up. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sydney Gray, and for the last four years, I have been working with Maji Mamas to bring water into their communities. We have grown from 20 women and a single water point to over 270 women serving 6,000 people across four counties in Kenya. We have drilled wells, we have purchased tanks, we have laid pipes, and we have found that we need to find something better than pipes. We have found that we need to shift the conversation from investing in pipes to investing in people. Charity can build something sustainable, but we need better than sustainable. We need to build a scalable world. So Maji Mamas, they're building that world, and they're building it with a resource that they have an endless supply of, the dirt outside their front door. Maji Mamas receive leadership training, business training, mentorship, and a brand. And by using interlocking stabilized soil blocks, an extremely environmentally sustainable technology, they can build rain tanks for their community for a third of the cost of what's on the market. These Maji Mamas are building scalable businesses, bringing water to their community, and increasing their incomes by three times. So pipes are expensive, which is why pipes rarely reach our farmers. And these Maji Mamas are the right people using the right technology to bring affordable water management to rural communities. This isn't just a tank. This is jobs. This is food. This is health, education, and infrastructure. This is women building an entire community. These Maji Mamas building an entire community one brick at a time. I want you to know about Sarah because she inspires me to do this every day and I see, envision a world with a thousand Sarahs. Sarah joined the Maji Mamas because she was passionate about the health of her community. She, let me tell you about Sarah. She single-handedly stopped a cholera outbreak in her community. She has educated hundreds of people in health, sanitation, and water issues. And she uses her increased income to send her daughter to school. Water is just the first step. These women, these Maji Mamas that I invest in, that we invest in, are building their new world one brick at a time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, now I now welcome Rebecca Kaduro from CAD Africa, Uganda. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca Kaduro, the co-founder and director at CAD Africa. CAD Africa creates economic opportunity for out-of-school girls through passion fruit farming. In rural Uganda, few livelihood options exist for young women. Due to cultural bias, they have limited access to land and resources, and their economic prospects are further hindered by high attrition from school and pressure to marry and have children. Oftentimes, they have to make risky life choices to earn an income, such as sex work and early marriage. Cat Africa is one of Uganda's largest fully irrigated passion fruit farms. We provide rent-free land, a passion fruit farm startup kit, inputs, training, and a ready market to more than 2,100 out-of-school girls aged 14 to 24 in Western Uganda. We do this through a proprietary training program that we call the Cat Africa Experience. In addition to setting up um, cooperative fruit farms, girls receive life skills training, gender empowerment lessons, reproductive health, entrepreneurship, while working together to build a sustainable agribusiness. Each girl's family participates alongside them. They get to go to their farms and attend a series of community events, and they receive 10 seedlings so that they can learn and earn alongside their daughters. We strongly believe that in order to create real impact, we need to shift the environment around girls so that they can thrive. 70% of the passion fruit in Uganda is imported, and this vertically growing vine allow, allows girls to take advantage of small tracts of land and a product that has a high value, long shelf life, and is easily transported to market. Through our girl-powered value chain, we've, cre we've cultivated more than 130 acres of passion fruit, and we currently produce five tons a month. And perhaps what I'm most proud of with Cat Africa is that we see that the model works. On average, girls experience an increase in income of 600% per month. Previously, girls were not saving. Together, a cooperative of 30 Cat Africa girls will collectively save at least $1,000 $1, within the first year. 
They invest this money back into their farms, into secondary businesses, and most importantly, a prosperous and healthy future for themselves and their children. In 2017, we launched an innovative um, value add model and we started processing our passion fruit into pulp. We do this using localized shipping container based processing units that can be replicated across different value chains and across Africa. This move will increase our market resilience, increase price stability for our girls, and creates a three times increase in value per kilogram of fruit produced. Um, this, our goal with this is to prove that as an agribusiness, we can successfully integrate girls into our value chain while being sustainable. At our current production value, our current production volumes, we expect to be able to break even and, and show this concept within three years. Cat Africa is working hard not only to include girls in our thriving value chain, but to give them the softer skills that are critical to economic empowerment. The impact on a community when an older adolescent girl and then a young woman is economically empowered is astronomical, well evidenced, and we believe at the heart of creating shared value. Thank you so much. Um, now, please give a warm applause to Jessely Rose Ong from the Philippines, Fishers and Changemakers. Hi everyone, my name is Jessely Rose Ong and I'm from the Philippines. Today, I'm so honored to present to you the Filipino brand of social enterprise. In 2013, the Philippines was badly hit by Super Typhoon Haiyan which affected a lot of fishermen and their families. These destroyed, these destroyed their homes, their boats, and their livelihood, but this didn't ruin what we call the Filipino spirit. Despite the difficult situation, despite the difficult situation, our fishermen continued to survive, fix their homes, their boats, through the help of many NGOs and went back to the sea. Despite this strong Filipino, Filipino spirit to strive though, the reality is poverty among fishers still has the highest incidence rate. Fishers earn less and so to earn more so they could feed their family, they have to fish more, not considering overfishing or illegal fishing. This poses another huge problem, which is the increase of marine degradation. Hence, Fishers and Change Makers Inc. was built to journey with fishermen, which helps increase their incomes and make them producers and entrepreneurs of sustainably sourced seafood products without leaving the ocean's health behind. With our business model, we found that it works for all of us, for the fishers, for the ocean, and for all the stakeholders. Thus, we look forward to scaling up, reach out to more fishers, partner with more local governments to be able to address the poverty and marine degradation in a large scale. This is the Filipino brand of social enterprise, and we commit to continue to build sustainable fishing communities and empower fishers one catch at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Jessely. Um, now, the next finalist is Ramon Morato from Brazil. He's with IDESA. Boa tarde a todos. Gostaria que vocês me permitissem que eu falasse em português por estar aqui na minha casa, no Brasil. Vou apresentar para vocês a nossa proposta de valor compartilhado na Amazônia. Todos conhecem a Amazônia e sabem do importante impacto que a Amazônia tem no planeta. Ela detém 25% da água doce. Ela é uma bomba de fabricação de água. Detém, de uma forma inestimável, boa parte da biodiversidade do planeta, parte dessa biodiversidade que nem foi ainda descoberta pela própria ciência. A Amazônia que conhecemos hoje está sendo degradada, está sendo consumida por um processo de desertificação. 
E isso tem um impacto direto na questão hídrica, principalmente do Brasil e dos países da, África, da América do Sul, mas tem um impacto global. A Amazônia tem um impacto direto na questão climática do mundo, como um papel fundamental na regulação do clima. Nós temos uma solução extremamente palpável e replicável que já vem acontecendo. A nossa solução é a fabricação de um café com floresta. Nós estamos produzindo café com floresta, o primeiro café florestal, o primeiro café orgânico, verdadeiramente amazônico. Esse café tem mudado a realidade da principal região onde o desmatamento tem avançado. Boa parte do desmatamento é convertido em pastos, e é preciso que tenhamos modelos que mostrem que é possível produzir na Amazônia produzindo floresta. O nosso modelo de impacto é justamente um fundo rotativo que possa permitir que produtores tenham plantios de café consorciado com árvores nativas da Amazônia, através de um crédito, um microcrédito facilitado. Esse café já é uma realidade, já tem impactado produtores, já tem mudado a região da Amazônia, criando um impacto favorável, retornando a paisagem florestal para a Amazônia. Nós convidamos a todos a conhecer o café florestal, um café que tem mudado a realidade da Amazônia e trazendo a árvore de novo para o sistema produtivo, através de uma cadeia produtiva sustentável e inclusiva. Nós, do IDESAN, acreditamos que os homens e as mulheres que moram na Amazônia, através de modelos produtíveis e sustentáveis de geração de renda e de plantios, são os principais agentes da criação e da conservação florestal da Amazônia. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigada, Ramon. Um, now we welcome Walid Ab El Rahman. Tell me if I'm mispronouncing your name. From Mum, from Egypt. Welcome. Hi. Um, my name is Walid Ab Rahman, and let me. You saw the video, so let me really quickly tell you why we started Mum. It all started with one big problem we were talking about today. Egypt has 35% of adults that are obese. This is the biggest, the highest percentage of obese people globally. And such a big problem, we wanted to start it from one context, context that we have every day, going to the office. Entry-level employees in Egypt um, spend every day in the office 25% of their salaries on one meal, lunch. The thing is, they have two choices. It's either they spend on junk food that is somehow affordable, or on super expensive clean food. We wanted to break this paradox and create a third alternative. And in that alternative, I met Sana. Sana has, um, after the turmoil, the economic turmoil in 2011, her husband lost his job. And she wanted to help the, 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 the family by finding a job, finding a job and creating a job for herself. And as well, there are 25% unemployed women in Egypt like her. Many of them try to start their food, their food businesses online, on Facebook, social media, and so on. But Sene, like many others, try to start and they close in three to six months because they don't have the right fundamentals from business, food and beverage management, logistics, photography, you name it. So here we thought of the idea of how can we create shared value to connect these both together and provide the right fundamentals for, for the solution to be there. So what mom does is that ladies, they apply to work with us. We go to their houses, do the hygiene checks, the tasting, provide pricing, photography, um, packaging, everything. So at the end of the day, the consumer gets nutritious, healthy, homemade meals that are 30 to 40% lower in price than comparable uh, um, uh, products on the market, and in parity pricing with junk food that is very affordable on the market. All in this without missing the convenience in 60 to 90 minutes from placing order to getting your food, that's what we do. We have grown, thank God, <laughs> and my team, <laughs> <laughs> we have grown in 2017 six times our volume in 2016. And this year, we're planning to grow by 10 times. And 
this growth can only be driven by one thing, by an engine of technology that is backing all of this growth to streamline our operations and make sure that we utilize all the data that is out there to optimize on the process and make sure that we have the right standards, quality, value, and at the same time giving the shared value to the ladies that we work with. We are determined to solve, the, solve this problem now in Egypt and later globally. If you're interested in nutrition or women empowerment, let's speak after this panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walid. And now the last finalist is Marco Pignatelli from Incamos from Peru. Welcome, Marco. Canarios. Este, mi nombre es Marco Piñatelli, yo vengo del Perú con mucho orgullo de estar acá en esta final y les vengo a contar, espero dentro del tiempo porque no lo he practicado, pero eh, lo básico de lo que estamos haciendo. Arriba de los 3.000 metros de, de altura en los Andes vive una población cercana al millón de personas que está en extrema pobreza. A pesar de que el Perú ha mejorado en los últimos 10 años y probablemente ha bajado cerca del 10 o el 15% lo que es la pobreza, lo cierto es que en esta zona, de, en esas alturas donde ustedes ven, la economía no llega de hace muchos años, siguen en la extrema pobreza o ligeramente habrán bajado un punto. Imagínense lo que es vivir familias de cinco personas con menos de dos dólares diarios, sin servicios básicos como luz, agua purificada, eh, alimentación nutritiva para los alimentos de sus casas. No les voy a decir lo, lo, lo que significa menos de dos dólares porque ustedes son los expertos en esto. Pero lo curioso y lo mágico en realidad de esto es que en esas zonas, en esas alturas donde ustedes ven cubierto por esa neblina, crece una planta casi mágica que se llama musgo, spangum moss, nosotros le decimos musgo blanco. Esta planta tiene una alta demanda en el mercado mundial, en Asia, en Europa, en América. ¿Por, ¿por qué? Tiene tres componentes básicos y eso responde también mi presencia en este concurso. Primero es un gran absorbente de humedad de agua. Esto hace que las plantas, el proceso o la continuidad de regadío sea menos frecuente. Es un antibacterial natural, lo que significa menos uso de químicos. Y es un gran absorbente de metales pesados, que si me da el tiempo les explico al final el por qué es básico acá. Antiguamente las comunidades lo quemaban. Quemaban los dólares que podían resolver muchos de sus problemas básicos por desconocimiento y porque los cultivos que pueden crecer básicamente en esas alturas son papa, habas, que es lo tradicional y lo que han hecho de generación en generación. Al ser esos productos eh, posibles de también procesarse, bueno, en todo el mundo se procesa papa, entonces ellos en esas condiciones, ¿cómo pueden competir? Al no poder competir, lo que hacen es ampliar sus zonas de cultivo y lo hacen con quemas para poder hacer más volumen y tener una esperanza de, de vida. Con esto no solamente agravaban su economía, sino que perjudicaban el medio ambiente. Hoy, esas comunidades a las que estamos interviniendo les genera un ingreso que es del orden del 25%. Lo hacemos desde el inicio con un sistema de valor compartido. Es como una mesa de cuatro patas en donde la primera pata es el mercado. Hay una demanda enorme que tenemos oportunidad de satisfacer con un producto de calidad competitivo y que sea sostenible en el tiempo. El 
la segunda pata es el Estado. Al ser un recurso natural se requiere planes de manejo, permisos, certificaciones que garanticen la sostenibilidad. La tercera pata es la empresa, pero la cuarta y la más importante de la cadena de valor es la comunidad. Ellos son los propietarios del musgo y en esa mesa nos sentamos los cuatro con un solo objetivo, sacar un producto competitivo de venta al mercado en el que todos ganen, pero especialmente las comunidades. A la fecha son 15.000 personas las que se han beneficiado. Hemos logrado ventas de 400.000 dólares y participa el 60% de mujeres en, el, en la cosecha. Hoy tenemos un nuevo sueño, subir eso 45 mil personas, repartir más, en, hasta donde hemos llegado ha sido un millón y medio de repartición, por cada dólar de venta, 48 centavos quedan directamente en la comunidad. El, nuestro nuevo sueño, evidentemente eso requiere un premio financiero, no lo voy a negar, pero en los próximos cuatro años, si nosotros contamos con el apoyo, el ofrecimiento nuestro es que juntos podamos lograr este nuevo sueño. Un lema nuestro cuando empezamos y que fue el, el lema del concurso fue que ningún sueño es demasiado grande. El estar acá prueba que ningún sueño es demasiado grande. Gracias. Gracias, Marco. Wow, these are such amazing projects. Uh, now I would like to invite Mr. Schneider to come back to the stage and announce. Thank you very much. And I think I'm speaking on behalf of all of you in saying that uh, we have deep respect and admiration for the work that's been done here. You're doing very, very good work. So thank you very much. And um, I think um, in that spirit, Uh, we'd also like uh, to announce that for all of the finalists, outside of the winners and the runner-ups, uh, that we are awarding 20,000 Swiss francs to support this good and worthy work. Now, this brings us to the Oscar moment. And referring to Ostas, are you sure it's the right envelope? Yes. Please, okay. no fade then away moment, please. I just want to make total quality management, okay? All right. So, the runner up is Inca Moss. Marco, congratulations for awarding 40,000 Very careful handling because it is not fixed to the base. But uh, okay. okay, over here. Which brings us to the next envelope. <laughs> And studying the paperwork very closely here, I um, have the pleasure to announce that for the first time, we actually have a joint prize awarded. Um, it'll go jointly to Mum. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> and, and Fishers and Changemakers. Creating shared value, it also means you have to share one award bowl. <laughs> okay, so 
For now, I will keep it. My suggestion is you alternate one year the bows with one the other year with the okay? But uh, congratulations and uh, all the very best. To say a few words to thank you, the winners. If you want to come up to the podium to say a few words. Okay. I want to say thank you. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you very much uh, for first the opportunity of uh, being here. Not only because of winning or not winning, the, the model of creating shared value is the reason why we started our company. What, where we want to do an organization that both can prove to the world that you can grow a business and put all the investment and work into something that is good for shareholders and for the community. And we can become a business that is good. And this is doable, so thank you for that. The second thank you is for Ashoka and all the training that we have, we have got here. And the amount, and I want to thank my team for sure, and all the women that are making our um, work possible and bringing the amazing food to everyone that's eating, uh, which are our customers that are making us um, not sleep at night. <laughs> uh, thank you all for listening for me, and thank you Nestle and Ashoka for giving us the opportunity. Thank you very much. When I was a kid, my mom would always ask me, what my dream is. And I don't know why I answer that, but I would always answer that I would want to be a fish vendor. And she would ask me where I want to live, and I would always answer that I want to live near the sea and probably marry a fisherman. <laughs> and 30 years after, I founded fishers and change makers, and I'm actually selling fish. <laughs> and before coming here, in fact, after we submitted our um, application, by the way, it's my first time to be out of the Philippines. And after, so I don't have a passport. <laughs> So after I submitted, we submitted our application. The first thing I did was to get my passport. I don't know how we will get here. I just got my passport anyway. <laughs> and I think back in the Philippines, everyone was really praying for us. Everyone was already congratulating us. And and we feel that, and we feel that. Um, I was with my two co-founders who are here, and they flew with me um, coming here uh, without thinking that they would have to pay for their own uh, fare, which is crazy. And um, we just, we just uh, brainstorm af after every after every uh, session, and here we are. Um, we, it's, I couldn't really be more thankful for this recognition. Um, for, all the Filip for all the Filipinos back in the Philippines who have been praying with us and uh, who has been rooting for us, and for all the fishermen before I left, I was actually looking at them one by one and tried to remember them before I stand, before I stood uh, before the pitch. And this is all for you. Probably they're sleeping now because it's 4 a.m. <laughs> in the Philippines. But this is all for, for the fishermen in the Philippines. And we hope to reach more 
we hope to, to impact more. Um, and so thank you, Ashoka. Thank you, Nestle. Thank you for this opportunity to be here. <laughs>